Hey guys, Mish here, and for today's episode of Science Sundays, I wanted to share a study that is a cross between my two favorite subjects, psychology and nutrition. And the study looks at how willpower, or self-control, is related to your blood glucose levels. So in psychology, it has been known or thought for quite a while that self-control is sort of a limited resource. Lots of studies have shown that once you do one thing that requires self-control, it makes it harder to do another thing that requires self-control right after. For example, if you have been at work all day, at a job that you hate, and you have to force yourself to go to, it will be much harder for you to resist chocolate cake or some other kind of treat that you're not supposed to have when you get home compared to someone who's just been relaxing or doing something fun all day. Because you already had to exert willpower to go to work, and so you've sort of run out by the time the day is over and you're trying to resist some fatty treat or something. So these researchers took that phenomenon and looked at it from a glucose point of view because they'd found some other studies on how glucose seems like it might be related to things that are related to self-control. When you eat sugar or any type of carbohydrate, it is turned into glucose in your bloodstream. And a lot of your body's processes completely rely on glucose. For example, your brain runs entirely on glucose. And while all cognitive processes and everything you do with your brain does require glucose, Research has shown that more complex tasks, like self-control for example, require more glucose and are more affected by fluctuations in your blood glucose. So for example, if you've eaten a meal, you'll have a ton of glucose in your blood right afterwards, and then gradually, throughout the few hours after that meal, your glucose levels will fall, and then once they get low enough, you're probably going to have more trouble doing really complex tasks. So if you ever noticed that you're hungry and trying to take a math test, for example, that you might have a little bit more trouble with it than if you've just eaten. And so these researchers did nine very thorough experiments as part of this paper to really tease apart the self-control and blood glucose relationship and make sure that there weren't any alternate explanations. These nine experiments covered three main points, and the first one was whether or not a task involving self-control will deplete blood glucose more than a task not involving self-control. And what they found using two funny tasks. One was having half the participants watch a video with a woman talking and random words flashing at the bottom, and they're only supposed to pay attention to the woman talking. Whereas the other half of the participants watched the same video, but weren't given any instructions. So it took a lot of self-control for these people to focus only on the woman and ignore all the words. And as a result, their blood glucose was much lower after the experiment than the participants who did, were not given any self-control instructions. And they did a similar thing with a interracial interaction task. So people who had more trouble suppressing their racist beliefs used up more blood glucose during the task because they had to exert more effort to not be racist. Which is kind of interesting. <laughs> and the second main point that the researchers looked at was whether or not blood glucose dropping after a first self-control task would make participants do worse on the subsequent self-control task. So after these two tasks, the video or the interracial interaction, they then had the participants do a Stroop task, which is a classic psychological self-control task. You may have seen it before. It's where you have a bunch of words for colors names, so like red, blue, green, the actual words spelled out, and they'll each be colored differently. So for example, the word green might have the color yellow, and the participants are asked to say just the color of the word, not the word itself. And this requires a lot of self-control, it's really difficult. And the researchers, as they expected, found that the blood glucose level of the participants was directly correlated with the number of errors they made on the Stroop task. So the lower their blood glucose, the harder time they had doing a good job on this task. So it seems that low blood sugar makes it really hard to do self-control tasks. And the last and most interesting point in my mind that the researchers looked at was whether or not they could undo this effect of having trouble on a second task by giving them a Kool-Aid drink in between tasks to restore their blood sugar. So this was to tease apart whether or not it was the blood glucose causing the problem, or whether it was just being tired from that first task. And so, they once again had the participants do that first video watching task where they had to just pay attention to the woman, and then they gave half of them a Kool-Aid drink sweetened with sugar, and the other half a Kool-Aid drink sweetened with Splenda, which will not turn to glucose in your bloodstream. And they looked at how they did on that Stroop task again. And the participants who got the real sugar drink did not have any impairments or performance issues, so they performed just as well on that second task as did the people who didn't even have to do a first self-control task. 
So it seems that the only reason that exerting self-control once makes it harder to do it again is because of the blood sugar drop that you see from the first one. And if you replenish the blood sugar, you don't have any problems. But the people who got Splenda did see a big problem with performance on that second task. So their performance was very impaired compared to the group who got the sugar. And the researchers repeated these experiments with slightly different tasks. For example, one that involved persisting instead of the rapid responses you need for the Stroop task. And so people who had lower blood sugar did not persist as long on the persistence task. And similarly, they tried a helping task. And so participants were asked how much help they were going to be willing to give someone after doing a first self-control task. And those who were given the sugary drink were way more likely to help than the ones who were not. So it seems like your blood glucose is vitally important to being able to exert self-control and pretty much everything productive that you do in a day does require some kind of self-control because like getting out of bed in the morning when you want to sleep more requires a lot of self-control. Deciding to do work or do anything productive rather than watch TV all day might require self-control. And so if you can maximize the amount of self-control you have, it seems like you might be able to improve your life and productivity a lot. And so the main takeaway from this study in the academic world is that it supports the idea that self-control is limited, but it also provides a really fascinating link with blood glucose and a way to restore your limited self-control once you've used some up. And to me, the main takeaway is that, of course, you know how much I love carbs. I think it really just supports how important carbs are, especially considering that your brain runs entirely on glucose. And so if I were to extrapolate based on these results, I would wonder whether or not low-carb diets actually give people less self-control in their daily life because they're not getting as much glucose as they could be with a normal carb or even a high-carb diet. And fascinatingly, if you're in ketosis, you don't really have much blood glucose because you're running on ketones, and the brain has a lot of trouble using ketones. And so, while you are able to convert some of your protein to glucose, I wonder if people in ketosis actually have more issues with self-control considering they're having to turn down carbs all day long and have to do all their normal daily life things. I just wonder if being in ketosis actually makes daily life harder in a way. But I haven't found any studies on that, so either I'm going to have to do one myself in the future or keep an eye out, because that would be fascinating. And so moral of the story from my point of view is eat more carbs and you might have some better mental capacities than people who don't. Thanks so much for watching and please share and subscribe to see more videos.